Okay, this is video number three of the tutorial, and this is the part where I may lose some of you because it involves some pretty decent uh, code in the calculation field to pull out each of the individual pieces from the JSON result that we got in the previous step. So uh, let's get to it. So we have this JSON, right? And now we want to pull out the information, say the street number, to a specific field so we can then later get the the address and so forth. So what we have to do is modify the template. I'm going to add a calculation field. Pull that right in here. We'll call this street. And now here's the fun part. I'll try to explain this goes slow step by step. I mean you're better for it if you can understand what I'm doing. If not feel free to cut and paste it or just copy exactly what I have and you should be good to go. So the first part of this is we want to get create a variable and we want to pull in the full JSON address and the results. So we've got to pull in this part of the, the information. So you say json.parse at address JSON and now we want the results part of the address results we end that string like that to make sure we know we're going on to the next statement now we want the address components of the results so we have the results and then the next level underneath the results this indicates a level when you see the square bracket is the address components. So we want to say AC, I'll abbreviate for address components equals results. And then the square bracket saying I want the first result. And usually in code development, the zero all results start with zero and then go one, two, three, four, five. So if there's ten results, you'll see the last one will be a nine, first one will be a zero. This is not the place to really explain that, but that's the basics of it. So you want to say for the results, I want the first instance and the address components of that. So we'll pull that there. And now we have the address components and we want to loop through each of the individual pieces and search for the street name or the street number. So to do a loop you have to do a for var i so you create a variable i equals zero for the first part of the loop then you have to say i where i is less than the length of all of the number of options. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or nine of them in the address component. So basically you go zero through eight. But this doesn't this changes depending on what information Google gives you back, so you have to do it this way. And so we end that there. Now we're going to increment i in the loop. And this is how you do that. This is saying every time we go through the loop, we're going to increment it by one. This plus plus means increment by one. So we'll close that off. So that's the loop. This is the end of the loop. Now we'll fill in the information in the loop that we're going to do. So we first thing we want to do, we have to check to see if we are finding the street number. So if AC comma I, so this is checking in the first time through the loop we're checking the I, well, we're checking the first record, which is this one. And we're going to say type. And this, this pulls in this information. So the type, and we want the zero record of types. There's another level. Now, I realize I'm definitely losing most of you here, but just bear with me and we'll get through this and it'll work. So now we're looking for a street number. 
just to make sure we're pulling the street number. So just say street underscore number. It's a string. Close that off. So if it equals street number, then we are going to pull out the information. So let me say it for the address component of i, which is the one that we found the street number for. We want the short name in this case. I mean, it doesn't really matter because short name, long name, same thing. But when you get down to uh, state, it might be different. And you also see in the route it's different too. So we want the, the short name. And then since we don't want to go any, we found what we're looking for, we don't want to go any further, we can just break, which then breaks from the loop and jumps you out. Now what I also like to put in, now this basically is done, this will work. Okay, but I also like to do is if there's nothing there, say else, close off the else part of this, and give it a dash just to say that oh, there's nothing here, we're going to put a dash there, meaning nothing. So this is basically how it will work. Now to get a little bit more fancy with uh, code, we can say we want to make sure we're not causing any errors and it doesn't blow up on us so we call try so we're going to try this break it down here to four end of the four so that we'll catch any errors here e is the variable for error and if there's anything any errors we just want to place that in there because we don't really care and close that off so now this will find the address of the street name. So let's see if what I did actually works. It says unexpected token catch. Okay, I have a few uh, spelling mistakes in here. So let's go back and fix those. So let's say result, we want results. Parse with an E. That fixes that, and come down here, and that should pretty much do it. I think you have a semicolon here, and there you have. See now it pulls out 605, which is great. So we can say done. And then we look street name 605. First one's the hardest because the next ones we can just cut and paste. So let's add the address and do modify template, add another calculation field underneath here, call it the street. And we can take this part, highlight the whole thing, copy, paste. And we just have to change this to route. So now we're looking for route. Click off of it. Oh, since we cut and paste, we have to redo the build. And now we got Brocalo Drive. See, and this is an instance where we can say short name. We get the short name. And now the long name has drive spelled out fully, so let's just show you the difference there. Long. And now drive spelled out fully. I like the short one. So now let's add a few more of these. So let's pull another calculation field, call this neighborhood. And we still have this in code, so we can paste it in here again. Now we're looking for neighborhood. So I spelled that right. And we gotta reset this. That's JSON and neighborhood whippany. We're good there. Calculation field. 
city paste. Let's re pull this one in here first. Dress JSON. Now we want to see what the city they use. Locality. Locality. We go and Hanover. Perfect. Now we want the city and the state. So we'll go with the state. Paste in there. Reset this. Now what are they for the state? And actually, let's do the county first because that's we'll do this in order. The administrative underscore area underscore level underscore two. Let's see if I can remember that. Good luck. Let's change this first. So this is county. So administrative. Ha, told you I already forgot. Administrative area level two. Administrative area level two. And Morris County. Perfect. Calculation for state. Paste. Replace. JSON. I'm going to call the state administrative area level one. Let's go and cut and paste this. Well, let's not cut and paste that because then we'll lose our code. So administrative ministry to area level one take off and I typed it in wrong wrong administrative with an I and there's New Jersey again we can go the long name here and we'll get New Jersey spelled out put the period out of there and New Jersey or back to the short name just the NJ. What else do we have here? We can get the zip code or the country. We'll do that. Country. Paste. Hit that. Country. US. And zip, paste. Let's get repetitive. It definitely does, but makes it easier. Let's see if I can guess this one. Let's see. Zip. Oh, this is postal code. Oh, seven nine eight one. We're almost to the end. Calculation plus. Four zip suffix paste at JSON postal code suffix and voila. And there is everything from here pulled out to there. Now, the last information that you may need, and it's a little different code then this is to get the longitude and the latitude. So let me show you how to do that. Need calculation, longitude. And then to do that part, excuse me, I'm going to go cut and paste from my other app where I have this uh, done already. Here's my longitude. We're going to copy that, paste this into here. We'll replace this, JSON, and now the longitude. So basically how this works is almost the same. So we're getting the results here, so this level. And now instead of getting the address components, we want the geometry location, or the geometry area. So results, don't want this. So we got to go all the way down to, we don't want the formatted address. What we want is the geometry that's the next thing down. So now we got that geometry and then we also go one more level down which is location. 
So you see geometry and then location is under here. If this was formatted correctly, you'd see it, it would be indented further and it'd be easier to read this. So now we have the geometry and the location there and then we just pull the last bit is the longitude which is LNG. LNG. We get that. Okay, and then we just say since this is a number we need to output it as a string. We say string and then the value AC. And that gets put in here. And we also pull this the error catching here which is the trying this. If it fails you catch the error and you put in could not parse JSON or the dashes if you want. You can put that in. Whatever is easier and you close it out and that's how you get the longitude. Now the latitude field is just as easy. Even easier since you've done it once. Create a calculation field. Latitude. Hope I spelled that right. Paste that code in there. We don't want the launch. We want the LAT for the lat. I think, oh, got to replace this. Always forget that. JSON. And there's the latitude. So that's how it all works. It all comes together. So now we'll say done. Take a look at our field. And now we have every bit of information for a property that comes from Google. And you know it's good. It's almost like verification because people put in this address, you can put it in different ways, it, commas, uncommas, uh, and the Google API does a great job of deciphering what exactly this is and puts it, and then you can use that and it gives you, it returns you the exact right information, full information for the property that you can use and it will be consistent. I see I, this should just be street number. So you have street number, street, neighborhood, city, county, state, da 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 da, da. So now let's, uh, I'll just put in a whole new property and you'll see how this works and how fast it works. So close this, you can add a new property. Uh, that's the one. OK. Save. Now, bam. There you go. Three Grisma Road, Cedar Knolls, Hanover, Morris County, New Jersey, USA. That zip code suffix, longitude, latitude. Here's the JSON that this information came from. And if you have any questions, please ask me. I will put this code in the uh, the blog post so you can cut and paste it directly in and then just do the rechange this to map to the uh, the JSON field that you created and then you can just keep changing this value for each field so uh, again have any questions send me an email leave a comment I'll be happy to help thank you